if these orbs are from another planet, why did they choose Cleveland of all places to make an appearance? It might not have been random. Some believe that it may be because of our giant shrine to musicians right here on the lakefront. And you know, it kind of looks like a spaceship, doesn't it? Many musicians who are immortalized inside the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are believers. So maybe these outer space visitors were just here to visit their followers. You know, you have an analytical side of your brain and a creative side of your brain. And really, the only two things that I know of that makes both hemispheres fire simultaneously is music and meditation. Michael Luckman found so many connections between legendary musicians and Martians that he published a book about it, Alien Rock. After about three years of deep research, I've discovered all kinds of amazing links between such rock icons as Elvis, uh, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Jerry Garcia, Jimi Hendrix, and David Bowie. Luckman says Elvis's link was the most unusual. He claimed to have been visited several times by aliens. Maybe they're just more open, because if you're not looking, you're not going to see it. You know, I tell people, just look up. The Ufology Project says most reports around here can be traced back to birds, planes, or Venus. But... You know, there are things that we find that we can't, really cannot explain, and, and those are the things we really want to look at the most. There's no doubt the Rock Hall and its inductees draw lots of visitors to Cleveland. The question is, has it attracted some from out of this world? Jen Pachano, 19 Action News. Well, there's certainly a lot of star power in the hall, Absolutely. that's for sure. We know that. Yeah. Well, it's not just Toyota now. Okay, so you may have asked this question before. Are we alone here in the universe? An East Lake man hopes to answer that question. He plans to send a message to an interstellar object that's racing through our solar system. The act of us trying to communicate with them is very, very important for all of us. News 5 investigator, uh, News 5 investigator Joe Pakanakis has more on the mission that's set to launch on Christmas Eve. Well, using satellite or radio telescope technology to send signals over great distances is nothing new. But this time the signals are being sent to a Muamua at the edge of our solar system, a small object discovered by Hawaiian astronomers. And the people you're about to meet are wondering if that small object is more than just a comet or an asteroid. Mankind has made a number of attempts to let the universe know we're here, sending Voyager 1 into space in 1977, along with a golden record chronicling the existence of man. Elon Musk, SpaceX, and its Falcon 9 rocket set to land information on the moon about humanity through a program called Luna Prize in early 2022. They need to know we're ready for contact. And now, Eastlake native Michael Lee Hill working with a team and a powerful radio transmitter in Arizona, trying to send a message from humanity to Oumuamua, a narrowly shaped asteroid or comet now heading toward Neptune. Hill sending his music on the transmission, hoping his team will get a response back. Truly, if we're not alone, and what the team members believe is when Oumuamua came through our solar system, it might have been waiting for the proper response. The effort to communicate called Calling on a Muamua, set up by Richard Hoagland, who became known for his commentary with Walter Cronkite during the Apollo launches. Just like we're trying to get a Muamua's attention, if we can get, get the scientific establishment's attention, then we will have succeeded. The message to a Muamua will be both musical and mathematical. That's where art meets science. Music is a form of communication. And what establishes music are mathematical harmonies. It's people like me who say, well, they might be wasting their time, but in fact, they may not be. But Cleveland State Research Astronomer Jay Reynolds says the effort is a big long shot at best. To what gain? Because there's no evidence to suggest that there's anything there to, uh, to receive a signal or to respond to a signal. And Reynolds says any results would have to go through repeated reproduction and extreme scientific examination to confirm any findings. Still though, just like launching that gold record into space, Reynolds says it doesn't hurt to try. Give it a look, that would be very exciting. I would be very excited. So go ahead, do it, I'm all for it. And the effort to send signals to Oumuamua starts on Christmas Eve and runs through December 26th. I'm News 5 investigator Joe Paganakis. Well, this sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, but some here in Northeast Ohio insist they've seen unidentified flying objects here saying, 
were even in a hot spot for sightings. Okay, so science fiction or the real deal? What do you think? Recent study found a majority of Americans, about 56%, believe UFOs are real. Bobby, your side investigator Joe Paganakis introduces us to some local people who think they've captured something on their cameras from out of this world. Catching the unexplained, the unidentified on video. And I seen this light come out of like the lake. Northeast Ohio UFO videographers sharing their images online. There ain't no plane. No. Hey, everybody check this out. Hey, y'all, come here, y'all. Look at this. Raising questions and commentary from skeptics, believers, and the open-minded. There's another one. There's a third one. That we may not be alone. What I saw, I can't explain. Some don't try to define what they've recorded. That's above my pay grade. While others are sure what they captured with their camera. Wait, wait. Oh, do we have three? Is not from this world. And there were three saucers above me, one on each point of an equilateral triangle. Each of the UFO videographers we talked to say their sightings changed their lives. Within seven minutes or so, it disappeared. And then it came back. But as you might guess, not all of their family and friends believe what is pictured here is an actual UFO. So this actual activity has been going on over Lake Erie for a very long time. Videos of UFOs shot by Michael Lee Hill, a native of Eastlake, have generated hundreds of thousands of views, even featured on the History Channel. You can see this ball of light come down, and all of a sudden you can see its reflection on the lake. These were orange, they were solid, nothing blinking and no sound at all. Just last year, Nate Ellis used his cell phone to capture this formation of unexplained lights hovering over his Cleveland home. Trying to think of anything logical. Maybe it could be drones, maybe it could be flares or something like that. But again, the way they were moving, it was just a difference. And then they were in a formation. I was amazed. I was amazed. I didn't know what to think. Sam Phillips of Brooklyn captured one of Northeast Ohio's most talked about sightings over Key Tower in downtown Cleveland. So what the hell is it? During a peace vigil in March of 2007. There it goes. There it goes. Dozens of people saw what appeared to be an unexplained object. Uh, but I've never seen one like it. And the, and the, and the tape does not pick up the brightness. I believe that this area uh, in uh, the outer Cleveland here is, uh, is a hot spot. Dale Harder with Cleveland's Ufology Project, one of the world's oldest UFO organizations established in 1952, actually investigates sightings in this region of the United States. Harder says sighting statistics from the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON, show Ohio in the top five for UFO reports. And while Harder believes some UFO sightings are legitimate, he also says growing camera technology is generating plenty of fakes. Everybody's carrying a cell phone these days and everybody's picking things up. Aside from those that like to perpetrate hoaxes, there is a lot of garbage out there, so you have to be careful. Oh, I see this right there. Meanwhile, Ellis takes a more practical approach to his video sighting, unwilling to even try to explain what he saw that night on the Cleveland skyline, only asking everyone to keep an open mind. And I definitely look up. Well, you never know, man. You can catch something. <laughs> Who knows what you'll catch next time. Reporting on the skies over Northeast Ohio, Joe Paganakis, News 5. Mm. Well, the Cleveland Ufology Project holds its next meeting Saturday, May 18th. It's at the uh, Tri-C West Campus. That's in Parma. It starts at 730. Okay, hey. Very interesting topic there. A lot of people into it. Mm-hmm. That's your relatives coming down well, to pick you up for the weekend. I was going to say, weekend. Mark said the mothership's coming for him tonight. <laughs> right. So, well, I'm just saying. back to my home planet. <laughs>
So, in other words, uh, when you're recording this thing, I mean, it seems to me over and over a lot of the video that I've looked through, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a novice, of course, um, is that this video was in formation. A lot of times, these sightings they're they're in a formation. Is that is that kind of what you've experienced, or what? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, you know, we spoke and. I've been contacted by the what's been called the secret Pentagon UFO program that um, gave $22 million to Bigelow Aerospace. And I learned a lot. And they said, yeah, these orbs go into these fleets or these multiple ones. And the dude, they're showing up worldwide. Um, and so I learned a lot from them as well. But yes, they very much, you know, working with the History Channel, I started to accumulate all this footage that were happening over all these major cities like Texas and Houston and Mexico and Niagara Falls and in the UK. And in the news, they're all being shown as isolated events, like they have nothing to do with one another. But when you put them back to back, well, they're all flying in the same formations and they're all the same objects. So I think, I guess that's what we're doing now is putting two to two, ooh, two and two together for people because, you know, the Pentagon and the UK Ministry of Defense, I can tell you, they know that this phenomenon is showing up worldwide right now and they've been studying it. Everyone just type in Bigelow, um, Robert Bigelow and 60 Minutes and you'll see that the CEO of Bigelow Aerospace who was funded $22 million by the Pentagon secret UFO program, he was just on 60 Minutes and man, he spilled the beans. So this isn't, people like to look at this as some kind of woo woo thing. No, this is real, you know? So thank you actually for taking this so seriously. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so when you first saw this, so, I mean, is Lake Erie a hot zone in your your mind? Yes. Um, you know, for so many different reasons, but I can tell you after, you know, my footage started to go viral, I was contact, contacted by the History Channel. Um, that led to being featured on the History Channel. Well, that led to being contacted by the NSA um, and... Uh, They've been studying this subject for a very long time and they know that it's a real deal. And so the reason I'm saying this, the head of this program, his name was A.R. Borden. And he said, you know what is underneath you in that area that you're in, East Lake, Ohio? Um, I said, well, no, not really. He said, it's the oldest underground base in the world and it's not ours. And so you know about the salt mines and how these, the world's largest salt deposits, um, so what I learned from the actual NSA is the world's under biggest underground base in the world is under Lake Erie. So imagine, you know, through my own research, I started finding out there's new newspaper articles back in the 1800s recording this phenomenon over Lake Erie. They call them wizard lights. And they'd send out boats saying they've seen these apparitions of like these balls of fire out over Lake Erie and thinking maybe a ship was on fire and it was a weird optical illusion. The ships would go out, you know, rescue crews. And they would find nothing. So this actual activity has been going on over Lake Erie for a very long time. And I like that because it takes away this idea that, well, maybe they're ours. You know, if, if it was happening in the 1800s, uh, but the cool thing is the phenomenon has not ended. It's ongoing still to this day, which is, I guess, why we're talking right now. Absolutely. You know, um, some some people say that they think uh, that the, what you're looking at is under certain atmospheric conditions, you can see lighting from the Canadian border. I mean, do you yeah, buy, I heard all that. <laughs> buy that. I mean, what, what, how, do you, how do you answer to that explanation? That it's, well, just, you know, go to my YouTube page. It's Michael Lee Hill and watch my film of them coming up out of Lake Erie and then igniting into a ball of fire while the one that's next to it goes down into the lake. You can see this ball of light come down and all of a sudden you can see its reflection on the lake and it's got done. But right next to it, one comes up out of the lake. And I can tell you, Bigelow Aerospace knows all of this. They've been studying it for a long time. And also the UK Ministry of Defense um, investigator Gary Hernandez pointed me to some of the UK Ministry of Defense um, recently declassified documentation. And they said the real deal are these orbs of light. 
in, in some process that they don't know about, three of these orbs of light or chariots of fire, have you, can come together and create one giant triangular craft that's seen over Phoenix and being seen worldwide right now. This isn't my opinion. I'm not just some crazy guitar player. This is the UK Ministry of Defense. Um, the Pentagon program said, we've been studying this phenomenon over what's called the Utah Skinwalker Ranch. And they're called skinwalkers in, at that area because the Native American Indians would see these orbs of light come down and take on biological life form, whether it was a very large, huge deer or a wolf. And this was actually documented by Bigelow's people because he bought the ranch to study this phenomenon. So you can imagine when they contacted me in 2011, and they told me, we're contacting you because we know you're in contact with the real thing because we've been studying it. So the point is, this is Bigelow Aerospace funded by the Pentagon and the UK Ministry of Defense saying, the intelligence behind this phenomenon we're experiencing can become anything physical, both biological and technological. And uh, what I learned from the Bigelow investigator as well is he said these objects have less to do with UFOs made of nuts and bolts and metal craft. It has more to do with portals and time travel. So, man, this is a lot bigger than people um no, but what I can tell you is I'm in contact with them, and the makers of the pyramids have returned. So a lot's going to be revealed. That's very cool, man. Uh, so again, what, what date was this when you shot this over Lake Erie? Do you remember? Was it what, what year? And date? Um, you know what happened is I started, I lived very close to Lake Erie. I lived in East Lake, and I was, you know, 10 houses away from the lake. So I started to see this phenomenon, not knowing what it was. And I started going down to the lake and just filming, you know, and I started to accumulate such a library. That's when, um, you know, it grew to a lot. And my YouTube page right now has over 5 million views. And that's what drew the History Channel. Um, so I was going down night after night. You know, I would have my handy Sony handy cam on a camcorder, you know, on a tripod and go down around sunset. And I was just ready. If a big ball of light went by, I was ready to film them. It took me a while to even learn, like, take the focus off, you know, because once that object gets out of frame, if it has to refocus, man, you're, you're done. So, you know, my actually filming them got better with time. But it got to the point where, man, I hated filming them. You can imagine these beautiful multi-dimensional color, like miniature supernovas are right out in front of you. And you're looking at it through a little black and white viewfinder. It's like, man. So I started to be like, we got this conversation going. I'm going, listen, I'm not going to film you anymore until you do something different. Come closer. You know, um, if not, I'm going to sit here. I want that, this, what I'm seeing to hit my retina, you know. So um, they began to let me know they knew I was filming them. And it started a communication between they and I that actually ended in me meeting them face to face in person, not channeling or anything. And they told me we were once known as the Anunnaki in your past. These are the ancient aliens that the ancient alien show is about. At that time, there was no ancient aliens. I had no idea what an Anunnaki even was. You know what I mean? But they said, we heard you've been filming us over Lake Erie. So we wanted to talk to you about that. And we heard that you were on the History Channel and it was revealed on, you know, the UFO Hunter show that you don't have normal human blood. And we want to talk to you because it's, it's an indicator that you're of our hybrid bloodline. And so it's been quite a trip. That was in 2008. So it started with the footage. Yeah, it the classic with, footage. What year was the classic footage that you sent me? That was in 2008. Um, I filmed it, but the second clip I sent you was only maybe three or four years ago. Um, and that's really cool because there's three witnesses. You know, that's what the Bigelow investigator right. said, you know, right. when there's multiple witnesses. So you'll hear this other dude came over and he's like, hey, man, what is that? You know, yeah. so you can hear yeah. our dialogue. And he yeah. goes, no, yeah. so what's really great in that clip is he says, 
man, it's really weird when they just show up out of nowhere. And right when he said that, one showed up out of nowhere. I got it on film, you know. So um, it's almost like they're they're having fun with it, and that's what Big Bigelow experienced. He said, you know, if you look into the footage. It was the essence of John Alexander of the government who facilitated the Pentagon funding Bigelow. They asked him, you know, have you come in to a conclusion of intelligence behind the phenomenon? And he said, yes, we have. What we've learned, us and Bigelow, is that it's definitely in control and it's more complex than we could have ever imagined. And we now know we have encountered the trickster. And the trickster is mainly a Native American Indian concept of who the Anunnaki are, being multidimensional intelligence that's very been intertwined in human history for a long time. So that's what's important when you see Robert Bigelow on 60 Minutes going, we don't have to wait for them. They've been intertwined in human history right under our noses for a very long time. That's his own words, man. Michael, yeah. I, I could talk to you for like five hours. I'm going to get started writing this. But the last question I have mm -hmm. is, what do you say to skeptics? You know what I mean? And, and look look at your your camera and not at, at me at the screen. Look in your right. camera. You're at answering it. Mm -hmm. hey, what, do you, what do you say to skeptics? Keep an open mind? Mm -hmm. Keep looking up? I mean, what do, what do you say? Man, I'm going to tell you the true answer. And Spike TV didn't like this. In 2012, um, they probably contacted you guys. Spike TV did a TV show on my story, and it's not been allowed to air yet, which is interesting. But at the end of it, they came out and they said, um, what would you tell the people that still don't believe you that are skeptical? And I looked at the camera and I said, I'm sorry, you're so misinformed. In this day and age, man, this is not, you're just not looking into the subject and you've believed what you've been told to believe. Look into it for your with your own brain, you know. Um, so that they didn't like that answer. The producer came out from be behind. He said, "What? We just spent nine months of our lives, you know, and that's your answer. Sorry, you're so misinformed." So you know, I had to get into a little little bit better explanation. But truly, it's like look into Stephen Greer. Look into people of testimony of people that had the need to know and they, they were in the right places of government and their testimonies are now available. They have begun releasing this information through the disclosure project to actual government, to Congress. Um, people just don't know yet. It's not their fault, you know, I guess forgive them. They know not what they do, <laughs> but look into it. Michael, this is important. You're you awesome, man. I we're gonna I want to we got to do more. Um, I'm in. We'll do a mini series. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna throw this thing up there. You know, you, you may think that you know, hey man, God, that's kind of thin. It's gonna be like, I don't know, probably be two minutes, two and a half minutes. Yeah, but, I know how it goes. Be in our eleven o'clock <laughs> eleven o'clock show at at um at, on Friday. And, and then I, I'd like to do more, you know, so. Well, there's a lot more because, you know, we've not even touched. Do you know who Graham Hancock is, by the way? Oh, no, I don't. He is a New York Times bestselling author. He's had series on the History Channel that are just, he's world famous. Um, his series on the History Channel was called Quest for the Lost Civilization. And um, he's written a lot of, his recent book, America Before, was just in the New York Times bestseller list just last week. Um, his new book, America Before, is on the bloodline coming. He's All this other work is like he's been searching for the lost civilization, the lost nation, you know, as we were talking about. And um, in his new book, he's like, guess what? I found them. They're the Native American Indians. Hey, how about that? With everything to back that up. When I met him, because I met him at Serpent Mound in Ohio, I told him, I said, dude, I feel like you're the Calvary showing up <laughs> to, you know, to bring actually respect back for the Native American Indian culture and for people to realize, because it's the worst genocided race on this planet, Tell me, you know, please. was committed against us. Yeah, I'm it. Iroquois. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a lot to, a lot of work more to do, Joe. Mike, thank you. I really appreciate it last minute. And, uh, you know, I want your video to be 
well represented and um it's good to talk to you really uh, god bless and i feel like i'm in very good hands you've got great energy and um hey how am i going to be able to see this will it be up on yeah i mean um, I'm, i'll have it obviously posted on news 5 cleveland.com i'll let you know it'll have the whole lead in and all the setup as well cool. there'll be a web story associated with it and um so i'll, I'll send you the link absolutely awesome Hey, man, thank you so much for this Thanks. opportunity no to problem. share, and I really okay. appreciate it. Thanks. Peace. All right. Thanks, Michael. Did you happen to look up into the nighttime skies over the weekend? Did you see anything strange? Many of our viewers did. Some even caught the glowing orbs on tape. Glowing orbs flowing high in the air. Thousands of people saw these four mysterious lights in the sky hmm, outside Phoenix Monday night. The UFO. The United States Air Force said it could not identify them. Air traffic controllers from two different airports say they saw the lights, but they definitely were not from any of their airplanes. Above the skies of Northeast and East El Paso tonight, a sight that was a little more than stunning. This is what one of our photographers, Ram Moreno, caught on video. One solitary light that appears to be falling in the sky. But that light suddenly breaks apart into two, then three separate lights. Those lights then just freeze in the air and begin to hover. This is the weird, unsettling sight Paul, a longtime pilot, captured on tape. Mysterious red lights in a diagonal formation, just hovering above his yard in Whippany. Strange lights over the skies of San Diego. If Strange lights over Lake Erie. Over Phoenix, Arizona. A group of unidentified flying objects in the sky over Manhattan. UFOs are kind of flying over Chicago. This is just a great mystery. What is this in the East Texas sky? The same orbs have been spotted in London, Mexico, Canada, California, and Texas. So this is something that's in the sky that people do not know what it is. On 7 News at 5.30, a strange sighting above Boulder County a week ago. Three lights in the night sky. The folks who saw them are asking, What the fuck? What the hell is that? <laughs> What in the world is this? I have no idea what the hell that is. And I'm about to shit my pants. Yes, it certainly seems to be an interesting wave of sightings. And check this out. The three lights are close to each other, then spread out into this triangle pattern. Now, look at the pattern side by side. This from Manhattan and the other tonight in El Paso. I gotta tell you, they do look eerily similar. If it looks familiar, it should. Remember the Phoenix lights from the late 90s? Thousands saw the triangular glow in the night sky. The military said they were flares. Many are still skeptical. Could these lights have been flares dropped from planes, which some say explains the Phoenix phenomenon? Well, flares fall from the sky, and these did not, as you saw. So the mystery continues. There's no way that's flares. My brother said it's flares. Now it just pops up out of nowhere. Okay, in my opinion, there's no way it could be some type of flare. It had okay. to be something other because, like I say, it was they, they stayed in one area, they didn't drift off, and they, they made very specific formations. Just that they looked like very, like, in a formation, that they had a purpose. Strange red lights, brighter than a star, moving slowly in a triangular shape closer and closer. This triangle shape, what? That just looks kind of weird. In perfect triangle form, that's when you're like, Wow, what is this thing? So when you say they were in formation, okay, we're watching some video now. I don't know if you can see it, but they kind of move apart and then they kind of come back together. What did you think when you saw this? Extraterrestrials? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And I suspect that uh, unless uh, uh, the Defense Department proves us otherwise, that it was probably uh, some form of an alien spacecraft. Skeptics say there must be a perfectly good explanation, one that doesn't involve little green men. Could be an airplane making a turn. Nigga, those are not airplanes. Could be a meteor. We love meteors. Wait a minute. It's not a shooting star because it slowed down. Could be sea monkeys, which are brine shrimp, shot in the right light and superimposed on the blue sky with the shaky thing. I don't see how that would explain it exactly, but... Uh, it's just quite a step to say there was a film with remarkable images on it. It's quite a step from there to say it was definitely a spacecraft from another civilization. To say, that's quite a step. You bet it's quite a step. You know, any reasonable mind would have to say 
there's something fantastic going on here. The universe is vast because if you take, you know, the 200 billion suns just in this little Milky Way galaxy with planets evolving around them, and then you add that the 500 billion galaxies that are just like this one out there, uh, it's so vast and it's inhabited and there's beings that are thousands, millions, even billions of years ahead of us. Bill believes the latest mystery lights over Lake Erie are from a higher power, a benevolent entity that for some reason is making more frequent visits to our area. Does it scare you at all? A little bit, but uh, I mean, I'm a little optimistic. If it's something benefit beneficial for us, then I am very excited and who knows what will be. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why don't these aliens just show up for everyone to see? Go ahead, park your spaceship right in front of our 19 Action News studios here, and I will personally hand any little green man this microphone. Seriously, enough with the appearances on home video shot by a select few. Hill has an answer for that. We couldn't have the outcome that I believe they intend, which is for us to become a galactic society and a peaceful society. The way he sees it, the alien appearances are as beautiful as they are peaceful. And a sudden visit would be as traumatic to us as 9-11, like a terrorist attack. But he says time will reveal all truth. They will. They will. What do you think those red lights were? Aliens? Mm. Really? Mm.